This is John Costa at the Documentary Media Centre and we're speaking live to uh, Kavita Ashok. Good morning Kavita, how are you? Good morning, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, lovely to speak to you. Now, um, you took some time out of your day before to speak to us for World Oceans Day when we did a uh, newsroom here with, uh, that I co-hosted with Gerhard Haas. Um, so it's lovely to be able to catch up with you again, specifically during Climate Action Fortnight that is taking place here in Leicester in the UK where primary schools and secondary schools get together and start talking about the climate emergency. Leicester as a city has declared a climate emergency, so we're trying to get young people interested in this subject, and obviously the SDGs, as you can see, over my, over my shoulder there. Now, you actually reached out to me a week or so ago about um, lots of work that's going on there with the government as well in New Delhi around air pollution and also the crackers, like the firecrackers and, and fireworks, which we have here as well. So could, just tell us a little bit about what's going on with the air pollution at the moment. You know, uh, the whole of the first half of November and uh, last two weeks of October, you can say for nearly four weeks now, we've had the most horrible air pollution levels in the world, I think. Uh, the AQI was as bad every day, anywhere between 400 to 700, 800, you know and some days even more and it the basic cause i think a majority of the cause is always the stubble burning that we have in the neighboring states of punjab and haryana and uh, some part of up so it is an annual ritual with us now it doesn't surprise me anymore what shocks me is that we are you know trying to close our eyes to this issue every year and we try to pu push away and we think that you know once this, uh, you know, the stubble burning is over, things will subside. And it does, but, you know, we are not able to solve it. Today is a sunny day because it has rained in Delhi in the last two, three days. That's nature's grace again. It has nothing to do with what we could do to handle this, you know, the stressful pollution levels. So um, the challenge remains as it was. Yeah, I think sort of may maybe you've mentioned this before as well, but sort of year on year, uh, maybe it gets worse. But I think yeah. also what we've had with COVID-19 is an opportunity where we've seen what it looks like when it all stops. Um, so rather than think, trying to imagine a world without or less air pollution, we've actually seen it with COVID-19 because it's, it's, it's actually improved so much, isn't it, of the environment. So now, now it's returned. Um, it, the, probably the perception is it's, it's worse than it is it's ever been. And so it's, I suppose it's how we change the mindset how did we use COVID-19 and what people could see was achievable with uh, the reduction in air pollution and the environment I mean how, what do you think is the biggest challenge is it getting people to believe that change can happen or is it getting them to take some personal action themselves you know I think the biggest challenge um, is to make people believe hmm. that you can make the change you know that's the biggest challenge. And as a small, you know, organization that I have, Tree for Life, and whatever work I've been doing, the biggest challenge I face is that people, when they look at passionate people like you and me working for climate change and environmental issues, they think, all right, she's doing it, he's doing it, it's his job, it's his passion. We are not bothered about the air, the water, the river. Everything is okay. I go to my work, I come back, I have a good salary, I live. No. People, I think, first have to understand that it's a collective responsibility. So I think the day that happens around the world, I mean, people, when they wake up, it's just not the government's, you know, uh, John. It's also all of us together, put together citizens who have to, you know, contribute and be part of this whole big universal campaign, as I call it. You know, saving the planet is not one person's job, not mine, nor, nor yours, or not of a handful of climate activists or young children or youth who are fighting on the streets. It's, the, it's a collective responsibility. Yeah, and I guess also we can't just rely on governments and, and big businesses to uh, automatically do the right thing or expect them to kind of legislate to the point of, you know, they, they need to legislate for this as well. It's, it's more of a collective effort than that, isn't it? You can only put in place laws if people then abide by them and they're policed and people stop people producing things and dumping stuff. It's, it's more of a, a circular um, response, isn't it, rather than one particular group of persons or people? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a collective responsibility. But see, if you see from when I see where the problem can start to be solved, it is from the top. 
then the political will is more important than my will or your will because the leadership in the world has to be so strong that you know it has to take everybody in the flow with them so like suppose you know taking an example of india the political will has to be so strong the the you know the leaders have to make the policies so practical you know that they can be implemented on the ground we don't want uh, stories you know floating in the air which cannot be put to work so basically things have to be uh, uh, policies have to be made such that they are more practical they are feasible and they benefit majority of people so even if see if you think cutting down a forest is going to give us more urbanization more industry what is the other side of it you are trying to push away the tribals from that area you're taking away their livelihood their habitation you are also touching the wildlife i mean you are you know disturbing it species are deteriorating so it's it's a it is a very very deep science to understand i think that how much are you gaining and how much are you losing when you're disturbing the environment like that yeah and you can only take and take and take so much before it runs out isn't it you know if you're not replenishing yeah, exactly. something yeah i think if you and again talking to talking about young people and children um you know again this climate action fortnight that's going on one of the things that's really interesting here in leicester is that the uh, sustainable schools program that they've got um is working very much around the fact that schools are small communities like little villages or little towns or cities that you know they've got a carbon footprint they have to buy things sustainability and it's not just a project for the children it's the teachers the helpers the parents the trustees the local community they try and come at it from the point of view of this sort of again this circular thing where everything impacts on everything else i mean are you finding that your work that you do there when you're speaking to sort of you know, children and young people that that they but they believe that change is possible you know it's so surprising that children and young people are total believers they believe that they can make a beautiful clean clear world more than adults can you know it's difficult for me to convince a 60 year old man or a 40 year old woman and tell her please don't throw plastic here don't pollute the oceans and seas and you know pick up whatever garbage you see or something to make the switch you know to make the change but it is so easy to talk to young children and uh, i've been working with schools and universities and you know do a lot of work with uh, these energetic you know these little uh, what should, what should i call them shells of energy you know bursting with so much hope for a better world so i think they are the right target audience that as climate activist and environmentalist we should focus upon because they are believers they listen and they absorb fast and they are so happy to be part of any campaign so i think the energy there is truly magical the young the youth energy is so unbelievable and they actually believe that they can make a change yeah now you you you're also a, a women's activist as well women and health activist as well as an environmentalist do you yeah. do you see there being some connection between those two you know that sort of the empowerment of young girls and young women um with the environment as well that kind of joint joint struggle if you like for for equity and equality absolutely i think firstly i think women are very very aware now and uh, you know when we do campaigns when when we work in slums when we do health campaigns so i always include even in a small if i'm doing a health free health camp for somebody or some you know area i always try to include a small bit of an environment campaign with it even if it i'm i'm just giving away 100 trees or small plants or herbs you know or talking to see, because the message has to go that every home needs to create that green consciousness mm -hmm. and also talking about how not to use plastic stop using plastic so i have a campaign which says say no to plastic so if i do a health campaign if it is health awareness or a health checkup people have to understand women children on one segment have to understand that there is deep connectivity between your own health and your family's health and whatever is going on around you whether it's dirty air or it is impure water after all it's getting inside our body and our systems so of course i think it's totally related that's the reason i involve uh, you know i include health and environment as my parallel campaigns yeah okay i mean as as also as the president of your own ngo the um a uh, tree for life do you yeah. see that being hand in hand as well because you're you're giving something tangible aren't you you you're giving the tree and someone can see something 
mm -hmm. growing and changing and stuff. So rather than just sort of telling people what to do or how to recycle and stuff like that, it kind of goes hand in hand with a partnership, doesn't it? I think. Absolutely. You know, uh, this year has been a little low on activism as everyone around the world now knows because of COVID and we were not supposed to, you know, stand out in huge groups and create crowds or do a campaign which involves 500 people coming together, you know, in a camp or something. This is universal because, because of coronavirus, every government has. Even in Delhi today also we have, you know, in some places hot spots and, you know, sometimes there's a lockdown. This is happening all over the world. But otherwise, I see that, you know, when, whenever we do a campaign and if you're handing over something with a message, suppose I give away a cloth bag, which is say no to plastic. So that is a memory in the mind of the people. And if that person goes to 10 more people, 20 more people, so that message goes. So I totally believe that instead of just speaking, why not make it a memory in the mind of the person I'm communicating with? That's why I always use a plant or a tree or a bag or something. You know, it's like a um, it's like a little goodie which I'm giving to the person trying to say, listen, please be participative and keep. Whenever you see this, you will be reminded not to use plastic to plant more trees. So I think, um, yeah, it works wonderfully. Yeah. Now, also, you, you know, you're you're uh, involved in the media there as well, like you know, on TV panels and yeah. and things like that, and sort of you know, entertainment. Um, do you see that? Do you think there's more that the sort of, you know, TV, radio, the media, you know, maybe, maybe Bollywood, obviously, you know, as an outsider, you look at places and you think, well, Bollywood, you know, Nollywood, when I talk to my colleagues in, in Nigeria, do you think there's more that those industries can play in influencing um, people's uh, engagement with environmental issues? You know, we do uh, recently in the last two, three years, we've uh, very remarkably had one or two movies in Bollywood, which have focused on, you know, maybe a health campaign, uh, use of a sanitary pad or uh, something for a greener environment, something showing more political will towards, you know, environmental uh, challenges. But yes, mainstream cinema and even the media, you know, because I am a, a lot on, uh, you know, panels and TV channels. I think um, uh, I'm not denying that I have the freedom to speak on on television, but I think we need more environmental, you know, freedom and, uh, you know, uh, people are working towards more environmental justice to be able to express, even if it is on, on the streets or even it, 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 it is in the media. So I think somewhere we have to, um, you know, be bold enough to speak up and make our voice heard. More people have to do it. One or two people is not enough in such a big nation of, you know, <laughs> crores of people. We need more people, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose Speaking. also making it part of people's political campaigns that are aspiring to stand for office and represent people, isn't it? That having green credentials or you know caring about the environment can be a positive thing rather than being anti-business because i think sometimes you see a lot of these cases where you know big business influences a candidate because they know there's no way they're going to be able to change this law or that law or change that and i think we need to embolden people a little bit and really kind of protect their um their rights to be able to talk about these issues as well so we start getting a, a real proper um conversation yeah I think we've been able to create more conversation on environmental like uh, issues like five years back I don't think there was so much you know talk about climate change even in my own country or wherever the world it's suddenly in the last 10 years I think John it's really picked up you know it's like all over the world mm -hmm. and you keep hearing you know so many countries around the world today it's happening here today it's happening there you know you see people of all races religion coming out on the streets and making their voices heard and um, I think uh, like before the last election in India, I remember that, you know, I was on the streets with, for some climate change rally with a lot of children. I think 36 schools we had that day from Delhi. And uh, some media was talking to me. And that was, I think, the first time that I stood up on the streets of Jantar Mantar and said, let this election, you know, I, I said, we will vote for the party which will issue, uh, which will tackle environmental issues. If you cannot give me clean air, I'm not going to vote for you. So, so that's the kind of conversation, you know, we started from there. So now I, when I look back, I think in the last five years, this dialogue has become stronger. More people are talking about it that, you know, if, if I vote for you, I, you have to guarantee me good health and clean air and clean water. 
earlier i think people were more bothered about make more roads give us jobs today yeah. it's more about health and see with covid people have realized that health is wealth there is nothing about health you know when it comes to your own children and family and friends and when you look around you're so helpless at this point of time yeah. uh, i think health is the first priority yeah health is wealth i like that so final final thing and then i'll, and I'll let you go thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us um i said it's climate action fortnight so you know schools environment and stuff like that what what kind of message would you give now to the young people of leicester you know if you were to if you were to talk to a, a classroom or a, a, an assembly of, of young people that were primary school or you know secondary age school what sort of message do you think that we need to be giving young people about the importance of the environment you know my message to young people is that firstly because i love they all have to understand that i love to work with you all and your energy is so magical that inspires me 10000 more times to do more work your energy inspires me instead of me inspiring you i take that energy from you guys and i think that um, i trust you children i trust the youth and i think that they are the ones who are going to take the climate change movement forward because we are hopeful that they are more aware there is more more uh, consciousness to to greenery to marine life to conservation you know of uh, forest plantation so children are more uh, more conscious now and thanks to the you know curriculum and thanks to the teachers in schools and colleges because they are providing the children these days a platform which i didn't get when i was a kid we never talked about climate change when i was in school it was it, it used to be a very boring subject even to touch upon so teachers are making it exciting am i right john you know now it's becoming exciting to talk about it there are seminars and plays and you know dance performances relating to environment so i think there is some magic happening at school and college level and i want that magic to remain and let's inspire each other let me inspire you let the young inspire me and let's make this earth a beautiful place to live in green clean and clear lovely listen thank you very much for kavita for agreeing to speak to us today Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to speak with you, John.